My name is Jason Smith. I'm the head of Australian art here at Queensland Art Gallery. It's my great pleasure to welcome you this afternoon. I acknowledge and pay respects to the traditional owners of the lands on which we're gathered this afternoon. And I hope you're enjoying this dynamic uh, day of interaction with artists. And to continue that, uh, it's my enormous pleasure to introduce the artists uh, and convener of this particular panel, Politics, Representation and the Body. We're joined today by Sharon Chin, Liu Ding, Janine Eaton and Toloi Havini, who will be in conversation with Venus Lau, Artistic Director, OCT Contemporary Art Terminal. Sharon Chin works, lives and works in Malaysia, and she works across a variety of media to address environmental and political issues in Malaysia. Liu Ding, who is going to be assisted today by Olivier in translation, uh, lives and works in China where he pursues a research-based practice that manifests in a range of media, from painting to theatre production as well as curatorial and theoretical work. His most recent work involves appropriating the aesthetics and creative system of Chinese socialist realism, particularly in painting to reappraise its legacy in art and visual culture. Toloi Havini was born in Papua New Guinea and lives and works in Melbourne. For APT8, she collaborated with Stuart Miller to present a series of photographs that respond to the history and culture of Bougainville. The work engages with the deep connection to land that her people have, as well as the ravages of open cut mining and over 10 years of civil war. Janine Eaton, Eaton lives and works in Melbourne. Her work in APT8, Road to the Hills, a text for everything and nothing, is an eerie and expansive work that draws together historical and contemporary threads to reflect on racial intolerance. And hosting this afternoon's conversation is our colleague Venus Lau, a curator and writer based in Shenzhen, where she is artistic director, of o artistic director of OCT Contemporary Art Terminal and former consulting curator of Allen Center for Contemporary Art in Beijing. She won the Chinese Contemporary Art Award Jury's Prize with her proposal to rethink strategies of institutional critique within a Chinese context while exploring the links between ontology and objecthood in art. There may be time for questions towards the end. We're going to ask the artists to immediately reflect on their works in APT as a way of kicking off the conversation. We will be wrapping up at 10 to 1 at the latest because there are so many events that people want to get to. But firstly, uh, please join me in welcoming the panel and thank you, Venus, for hosting. Should I start now? Oh. Can, can you, is it working, like the microphone? So thanks, Jason, for the introduction, and, it's like, and thanks for APT, like, having us all here, and it's, like, such a pleasure to have, like, you know, all the art participating artists here, and also, like, all of you here, like, talking about representation, politics, and bodies, and it will be, I think, it, I mean, it's, like, a pretty freestyle discussion, so maybe we can start, like, talking about, like, each artist's works in the triennial, so, Starting from that and talking about like and broaden it, broaden it to you know like the more abstract or conceptual discussion about like you know what is body and what is the representation of politics and art and all that. So, tell why can you tell us a little bit? Oh, um, maybe we start with Sharon first. <laughs> I <laughs> sorry, sorry uh, okay. So um, you know, can you tell us a little bit more about your work at um, a that you're showing at APT that is like, involves a lot of like flags of um, political parties like during the campaign like in Malaysia mm -hmm. and how you modify it with like weed, like not the smoking, like but weed like in general. Like, can okay. you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, sure. Um, so the work uh, in the APT consists of uh, flags uh, with paintings of uh, weeds on them, and the flags are political party flags that are collected from my neighborhood before the 2013 uh, Malaysian general elections. Um, and the weeds are drawings of weeds uh, from my garden. So I think uh, the ju juxtaposition of uh, the weeds um, on this uh, polit political flag to me symbolizes uh, what I see as something very mundane and everyday, uh, overlooked, uh, sort of thrown up against a backdrop that is, has a huge impact on our everyday lives. But as citizens, um, we're quite distanced from that political process of power. So I, I see these works um, 
as a sort of description of the power relations uh, between citizens and that sort of electoral uh, machinery. Yeah, because then when we talk about like all those like flags, of course, like there are a lot of like consensual symbolic elements. While like the weed, especially when you said that it's the weed in the garden, which is like basically is outside the consensus or like out, uh, not consensus, like, like yeah, it's like it's like something that is not needed, that is not planned, or something that things needs to be expelled. Mm -hmm. Maybe mm -hmm. this is oh, this because is. Oh, so we just like follow this flow, okay. Uh, so Janie, can you talk a little bit about your work that we just like, shown upstairs, like with um, yes. the mirrors and panels, and also like you know the photo uh, the photographic work of your great uncle, like that is yes. like kind of mixed right, together. Right. Yes, well, uh, the work really started out uh, originally to explore the idea of the digital landscape, and um, I was particularly interested in how. Um, our relationship to, well, how we live in two zones, the virtual and the physical material. And um, the, the idea of the bank of the um, LED-like screens was uh, a kind of the, the essential ingredient. The positioning of the um, convex mirror brought into the equation the uh, absolute contrast between um, an idealised colonial landscape <coughs> of Australian art that we're all familiar with. It was a work um, done by my great uncle, John Eaton, and um, I thought that it also uh, took the, the guise of a surveillance camera um, and something, an element where we actually reflected literally back in time to against uh, um, the opposition of this virtual LED-like screen, this bank of um, uh, visual uh, sort of um, uh, reflective construction through which then the operative principle, these people, uh, could operate. And the idea that the body, the audience, the, the audience itself completes the work one of the things that um, was really important to me in the development of the work was daily, it took a year to do, um, was the sense that uh, it grew through the process. And as I'm working against this very reflective surface, <coughs> I'm continually being um, uh, reflected in it. And at the same time, um, I'm listening to Radio National, which is what I do all the time. <laughs> and the whole scenario of um, the um, Conservative government playing out with reports of the refugees, their treatment, um, the uh, obfuscation, the lies, the cover-ups of information that uh, goes completely against <coughs> the grain of our democratic principles, that here we're actually dealing with people in a a very um, um, cruel way. And uh, so over the, over the period of this year, the body be continually reasserted itself. Now, the, the, these people, <coughs> as if those of you who have seen the work would note that the, the, the um, text on the ba opposite wall is reversed, which uh, was intended to reflect the lies that were being promulgated by our government about their treatment of people. And, and these people, I must say, does not just refer to refugees, but to all the marginalised people in our society, to our, our indigenous people um, as well. So it's, it's us, it's we, it's, the, it's people, it's these people, it's us. And, um, and I, I think that that, that was a, a, a completion of... Um, the whole idea came together. It wasn't conceived originally when I started out. So as I worked against this reflective surface, I was in it, the refugees were in it, all the references were in it, and the, the phrase, these people, um, I'd used originally back in 2006 where I'd um, made a painting, and it was at the height of the Howard government's treatment of 
uh, asylum seekers and uh, people arriving by boat, um, the Tampa incident and so many other things. So it, it kept coming back to me and so that's why uh, I finally, it all came together that the, this is how the, the um, operation worked, was the landscape, the loss, and like my fellow artists here, um, at the relationship to land, to loss, to destruction, um, all of those things, I think we all deal with the politics and how that actually um, affects so many people, particularly and in general. And um, that's just some of the things that I tried to convey in the, um, in the work, that opposition between the virtual and the physical and our action within that. So, Tulai, would you like to also talk about <coughs> your works like shown in the Triennial, which is like from your Blood Generation series and also like related to the coal mining industry in the place that you were born in? Sure. Um, well, the, the Blood Generation work is really uh, a response to my father's generation of political activists and um, the struggle for self-determination in Bougainville and its sustained conflict over mining uh, in the gold and copper mine in Papua New Guinea, uh, in Panguna in Bougainville. And so I think um, I've always been fascinated by this term, the blood generation, uh, particularly the women leaders um, in a sort of tragic and sad yet poetic way would say to all the children from 1990 onwards who were born into war, they'd just say, well, you're the, you're the blood generation uh, because there was 10 years of uh, military blockade. Yeah, so there was a band in Bougainville, like a punk rock band called the Blood Generation, and um, I just felt that that period of history really uh, needed to be accountable um, because it sort of dominated and changed our sort of future. It still does today. Um, so the, the portraiture that you see in APT, the main... Uh, image of Sammy standing in front of the earth moving truck. That's a direct, uh, a direct story about how the women chained themselves in front of, like, to the earth moving trucks in protest. Um, so the Australian mining company Rio Tinto, it became known to them and the rest of the world that, in fact, this is our traditional lands and we'd do anything to stop mining. And I find that my father's generation uh, were very vocal, but this generation and the generation that uh, are born into that, there's a real sort of loss around, like Janine was saying, um, sort of dispossession, you know? And not just the people around the mine, but all the way to the north, where I'm from, uh, all the way to the south, the coastal, it's impacted the whole region. Um, so a lot of, they're all my friends and relatives who are in the uh, images. And um, yeah, I think, I think when you, you grow up you don't say, you know, when I grow up I'm going to be a refugee or you say, I'm not, when I grow up I'm going to be a political exile. It, it's sort of, these positions are put on you because of the, the privilege of others forcing you out. And, um, so that's really the concept and, and, and wanting to make it a, a documentation of that time because uh, <coughs> it's still an unresolved story in Bougainville. Um, the idea of mining coming back and uh, the, 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 the mine where Russell is standing or sort of looking over um, the mine, that's still uh, cut off from the outside. So the local rebels have um, blockaded it. Um, so, yeah, last night a, a, a good friend of mine who's from that area stood there and that was the first time she saw the, the photograph and she said, um, oh, I've, I've stood there, you know, I know that vantage point just here, you know. Um, so in a way, locally, it's, it's, it's become a, a very tragic 
tourist attraction. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's this, this big sort of cancerous, iconic um, setting, yeah. And this is Matthew. Uh, it, there's a whole range of like scenes in situ and in Bougainville. None of the, like he was just happy to be boxing, you know. Um, and there's Veronica standing in the gardens here. She's a relative of mine, and just wanted to capture youth in just what we're doing um, in Bougainville, sort of trapped in these areas of labour and um, sustenance and sport, um, yeah. It is interesting because uh, you work on these, um, this series with Stuart Miller, who is like, the photographer who does, of course, a lot of portrait and advertisement. Like, so how like, this kind of, this is like, because like, when you kind of mentioned about like, tourist attraction just now, it's just like when we have a lot of like, very traumatic landscapes and something that is like, how you know, like, the mass media present that like, it will be, yeah, so it's, it's interesting when like you're working with like a photographer who actually is like you know not only like um, very good or familiar with you know like the f art ph photography like visual language, but also you know like the commercial one and how because like these two are based on very different imagination of audiences and how these things are two put together. Yeah, um, yeah, um, <coughs> maybe we talk to loading. So um, you were showing three paintings um, at APT this time, which are, I think most people have seen, recognized that it's just like one of them is just like the, you know, like the browser window with like the year 1989. And the other two, like maybe you would like to talk more about that because it is uh, related to your uh, research on socialist realism in China and how it works as like a visual production methodology that affects the whole contemporary art world in China since 2013. Yeah, yeah. mostly. Yeah. yeah, can you tell us more about like, these paintings and the research behind that? Um, good afternoon. Uh, my English is good. Uh, Oliver helped me the translation, so I'm used to Chinese talk. Uh, first, uh, thanks to Venice Law is a very roughly in talking about my practice. Um, so I'm um, started, <laughs> Oliver help me. Um, 在这里我展了三张作品是三个油画是今年早一点的时候年初的时候在伦敦的一个个展的其中一部分 um, Here you can hear me? Yep. I'm, I'm exhibiting three works, three um, oil, oil paintings which are in the APT which are actually part of an exhibition from early which I completed early in the year for an exhibition in London uh, 这个在伦敦的一个个展呢,这个展览的题目叫新人,牛面. The uh, exhibition title of this, my solo exhibition in London, uh, was the title's New Man. Um, 其实主要整个, 整个想法呢, 还是来自于大概两年多以前, 我和我的太太一起开始的一个项目叫关于社会主义现实主义的研究。uh, and the thinking behind this uh, comes from a project that I started uh, with my wife, uh, Carol Lu, uh, from a roughly two years ago, uh, looking at, uh, well, researching the influence uh, of uh, socialist realism. Uh, 过去的这个历史里面，一直有人在研究，但是在九十年代以后呢，也有人在研究，但是并不那么多了。Actually, there's um, many facets to socialist realism in um, China, uh, and although in the past many people have studied socialist realism, after the 1990s, uh, there's actually not that many people paying it much attention. Uh, 但是呢，在文学研究里，关于社会主义、现实主义的研究呢，一直是比较流行的，而且一直是比较时髦的一个事情，在中国的文学。However, in the field of uh, literary studies, uh, it's been it's it's consistently been quite popular, at least in Chinese literary studies. 嗯，对于社会主义、现实主义研究呢，很多的研究是来自于。
跟当时的政治非常有直接关联的一个研究，很多的论述呢是直接跟社会政治，呃，紧密相连的一个研究的角度。Uh, most most of this research, um, the the majority of the research relates to on socialist realism. Realism usually relates to politics, to the politics of society at the time. Um, 其实我们重启这个项目的重启这个课题的研究呢，其实对我们更有兴趣的是，呃，我们看一看社会主义现实主义从建国四九年以后，从兴起到。发展到最鼎盛的时候，嗯，这一阶段的历史对于我们现在的中国的当代艺术和当代艺术史的论述，到底在起什么样的作用？这是我们的兴趣点。However, what、uh, we were interested in in starting this project、uh, was really trying to trace the development of socialist realism in China after 1949 with the establishment of the People's Republic,、uh, and then to try and investigate the the effect of This development of socialist realism on contemporary art in China today. What sort of effects it's had on contemporary art in China today? Um, when we look at Chinese modern art history and Chinese modern art experience, many times we start from the end of the Civil War. But the bulk of the research is based on the social realism, the social realism, and the Chinese political movement against the government to talk about. Um, typically, these types of, this type of research、um, is looking at a post-cultural revolution period、uh, when people look into the effects、uh, or influence on contemporary Chinese art,、uh, and that's usually done in a sort of oppositional sense of trying to oppose and、um, talk back to the politics of the Cultural Revolution. So, in terms of the Chinese modern art history, it's not just from 美国的学研究和包括从欧洲的研究，包括在中国内部的研究，其实投射了很过多的投射了关于反抗这一个课题。投射的，就是嗯 ，project， 嗯 ，yeah。Um, so actually, whether you're talking about research that's been done in China, but also the sort of research which is done in、um, the United States or in Europe, there's also a kind of projection of politics onto this, um, the understanding of um, this development. 就我们觉得现在是一个机会，可以看一看中国的当代艺术历史和当代思想史，跟建国以后所形成的一系列的社会运动，包括社会思想。的关联到底是什么 ？So we take this as a、um, opportunity to look at、uh, China, not only Chinese history but intellectual history and the relationship between this type of intellectual history with contemporary culture and contemporary cultural productions. 嗯、uh, ，所以，嗯、uh, ，在过去的两年的研究里面，我们通过展览，我也通过一些作品和我们的写作的研究来重访这个社会主义、现实主义对于今天的影响。So in this project,、um, that which, as I said, has been、um, going for around two years, we've、uh, been able to to work with both exhibition practices and doing exhibitions, but also writing and researching, publishing,、um, to try and reconsider the influence of this history on、uh, the contemporary. 嗯，同样在这个展览里，这三张作品，其实我是用了。早期社会主义、现实主义的一种工作方式，呃，通过呃，通过就是说我的想法和通过就是说我我出一个想法，然后来寻找到一个比较合适这个想法的这个画家来为我完成这个作品。Mm. So my approach to the three works that I'm sh that I have been exhibited here、uh, is to try and use a, a method of making、uh, to try and use a, a production method from socialist realist、um, art you know, historically, and then to try and find particular artists that reflect my own thinking and the things that I'm interested, the subject matters that I'm interested in, and then to sort of、um, be influenced. Sort of、uh, mimic their styles. In this process, I try to simplify some of the techniques I use in the production process, including how to use it in the communication process. I try to think about how to use it in the communication process to make the listener understand your thoughts and the correctness of your thoughts. 
，在这个里边，<笑>你再写一遍，就是说我通过这个方法。呃，这个传达的方法，嗯，来努力来量化和思考这个，到底我们应该怎么样制作一张作品，嗯，然后到底是怎么样通过这个，只是通过语言的传达，通过需要什么样量化的方法来传达一个更准确的想法，嗯，转译啊。So through this, um, what I've been trying to do is to actually um practice myself, um, through doing. This uh, visual method, uh, which includes um, the the study of the language involved and the, the techniques and so on. Thinking. The uh, sorry, the um, concepts as well. So thinking how how the person who's making these works is thinking. 同样，我也在每一个图像中尽量向呃尽量组织。故事尽呃尽量通过这个图像来组织故事，把这个某一段的历史重新恢复记录一个不同的语境。嗯，画面的那个图像。嗯。Let's just say reconstructing like the 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 you know it's just like the whole painting process is kind of like a story making that we construct you know like the you know original context of like where the surface production or the methodology how these were made <laughs> so it's interesting okay. that when Liu Ding is like his whole like recent research is about socialist realism because when we talk about like today's topics like body representation politics like when these all like keywords put together it's like socialist realism like in Soviet Union and also in China where a lot of images of a very muscular body is actually like when the body, like when the strength or like the power struggle between different classes are represented by a human body. So it is interesting when I look at the work, say, of all four of you, and then maybe except for um, Taloy, like you, you do have like bodies and then like, you know, like human figures inside your photography, but most of your works are like actually the bodily element is actually the absence of body like in in the in, in the works um i think it's an interesting like thought like, to think about you know like how absence of bodies or like the absence or exclusion of a certain community is represented or visualized in artwork um like Jenny, like we were talking about because like your your, your work like exhibited work like here is based on your great uncle's photography. And then you were talking about like for a lot of Australian landscape, the ideal for, um, from an ideal colonial gaze, it's just like a natural landscape without the indigenous people mm -hmm. there. Like everyone is like kicked out. Also when, when Tloy was like talking about, you know, like the, um, what we call the coconut war is just like the native people fighting against the mine, the coal mining company, this kind of like, Exclusion, like you know, also, also, like when, 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 like Sharon, when you show the flags, you know, like the flags are the symbols of like the sensual, the consensual ideals and concepts that link a communicated community together, without actually showing who the community, who are they in the community. So also like looting, like social as well. I mean, actually, it's funny because like one of your, there are three of like there are three paintings that you're showing here. One of them has like one human figure, two human figures inside. Like it's like a just position of um, a painting like of by Wu Zuoren. Mm -hmm. I think I think like he he was like kind of like an ink painter, like modern ink painter, like very famous. But he kind of had a relation like for the artists. Like by then they kind of you know have to you know like compromise a little bit with the CCP when they rose to the power. So. He has that like working class and like, wearing that kind of we call it Lenin blue like suit and then like poking <coughs> out his head from a train. In front of it, there is Lin Han, yeah. you know, this like young Chinese collector who just opened a museum in 798 and it's like a representation of this like nouveau rich ideal. It's like the Chinese like new class is just like, oh, we started like doing real estate and blah, blah, blah and contemporary art. So it is like, interesting to see like what kind of bodies are included and excluded like from this kind of like from and from your work like so um it's just like when Jenny was talking about oh, the these people like when you know when we talk say these people is like something that we cannot really 
you know, like categorize like these people, like they're mm. out there. Yes, it's a way of distancing yeah. people and they become other mm -hmm. and a, a group that um, can be easily, uh, you know, pigeonholed and, and placed in a, a zone that is in, in some ways completely disembodied from the uh, population that we live within and uh, relate to, I think. Yeah. So it is maybe like I think a lot of people who have seen like Jenny's works it's just like because like these people is actually printed on a wall and then across from the panel so when you stand inside that you know like you are the these people like in the reflection mm -hmm. so yeah. you know, like so I mean, I mean like also for uh, also Sharon actually you told me about like apart from the flag you also like talked to me about like the Hong your your research or like or participation in the Hong Kong umbrella, I, I won't call it a revolution, but like umbrella movement it's not a that revolution. happened last, <laughs> last, it's not, I, I kind of myself because, I mean, there was like a, a lot of like interesting debates about that, but yeah, like this is like a kind of inclusion. Like, can you ta tell us like more about like your participation or like involvement in like the umbrella movement last uh, year? Well, this, um, it, I wasn't involved in the umbrella, mm -hmm. the umbrella protests, mm -hmm. uh, but I was involved in the Bursay protests in Malaysia. It's not related, but somehow um, yellow was the color of both movements. Um, and I think the idea of the body and in protest movements uh, around the world is an interesting one. Um, numbers of bodies and what that means when a huge mass of human bodies are together. Uh, what does that mean for the individual uh, in that mass? Um, and I think the political process also does that same thing of uh, you lose the individual mm -hmm. you know, in, uh, in that structure. Yeah. yeah, that power, you know, that power relationship. So I'm interested in that tension between um, still being an individual, but doing things together. Because uh, you can't do anything alone, I don't think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the idea of the collective. Yeah, it's interesting when you say, because like, I mean, when you talk about flags and the color that, you know, like for this kind of like protest and political movement that we do need to like, I mean, unity is like, very important, but like this is what, like you said, like we risk like losing individuality, because you know, like this is something that we should push aside, like when we are actually working towards a goal. Mm -hmm. So like that kind of individuality, to a certain extent, like maybe to a kind of like ideal movement of protest, is like the weed in your flag that is like is outside the garden, like it's outside the plan and. It's yeah. supposed to be like that. Uh, it's not actively fighting against mm -hmm. um, the, you know, the, 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 the power structure. Mm -hmm. It's sort of growing around it, uh, on it, um, in spite of it. So it's very, it's, it's a different um, uh, power relationship uh, to each, you know, to each other, I think. But uh, also to uh, the main power structure, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I think the idea of like working around it is like we maybe one of the possible ways of like art dealing with politics mm -hmm. because like we always have to say that we have the crisis of representation and you know when we talk about politics like through art we always risk the you know like the risk you know the loss of immediacy you know you're always like representing you know the re is just like again and something is lost and something's adding in something is excluded and something is like included. It's, it's funny when you talk about working around it because I was at the protest and all my friends were like, and then um, it is like antagonistic like to the main structure, basically the Beijing government, <coughs> mm. trying to shrink like the freedom of like speech and everything like in Hong Kong. But at the same time, there are like different types of enemies, including the middle class, some are part of the middle class who just like don't want any change like in, in the city and also like so I mean actually the protesters are actually facing like on the when they are on the street they are facing like fighting against like the cops on one hand and also like um the gangsters 
who think that, oh, like you are like, you know, messing up my business in this area. Yeah. So like what they did is like how they work around it is like um, they built a lot of barricades with, with like construction materials where a lot of, because a lot of construction workers like join this protest and then like build it and put a small shrine on that, like off the wall of God, like Guan Di, like that is like uh, the God of war, like in China, that is like, worshiped by the cops and also the gangsters. And then like nobody dare to touch that for two weeks. And then, like, so that is the interesting of like working around it. So like, and then so um, Taloi, like when when we talk about you know like because like, I I was in um, I was like you know visiting the different museums in Brisbane like two days ago, and then of course I saw a lot of like artists who actually represent you know communities in images of like with images of bodies but a lot of time it's just like they have a very specific non-specificity that you don't know these people are it's just like social socialist realism like they have a very specific way to present bodies but it's like people from a certain class or like you it's not a real person you don't know it's just like a universal ideal but you actually know the people that you like you know work with in your photographs yeah, like, absolutely yeah. um and i think for Melanesians, and particularly Bougainville, um, uh, our, your body is, your land is like your body. Like you, my father used to quote an, an elder um, when, when he would, you know, talk about self-determination and people <laughs> trying to understand why a, a group of landowners wouldn't want to be moved off their land and receive royalties for money for mining. And Raphael Bella was an elder, and he's, he used to say, how, how could he um, communicate to Australians why it was so important that he stayed on his land? And he would say, well, my land is like the skin of the back of my hand. You wouldn't ask me to cut my hand off, would you? So it's pretty much, that quote says it all. Um, that's how much our... Our land is connected. It's it's our bodily experience. You inherit it and you pass it on to generations. Yeah, I think it's like because the land, like the idea of land, actually like changes. If like of course, like the especially in China, like the boom of real estate market. Actually, it's just like some like it's it's very very precious. Then when people say that all oh, like land is like part of my body, because it's like because land is like a. I, I still think that is like the real socialist aspect of China because nobody owns any land anyway. It's like you, and whenever you buy or obtain a piece of land, it's like you you know kind of loan it from the government for a certain like for seven decades maximum basically. So it's like interesting, it, but at a, it's like so far away. But at the same time, it's just like land is almost like what um, Timothy Morton called as like hyper object everything about land, especially the tax about it, like, you know, about using the land, buying the land, trading the use of the land. It's like basically like sticky, like stuck on us, like on every single, like on every type of like urban activities that we are having. So it's like very interesting when you bring up this um, looting. <laughs> um. Absence of body. So you did um, a performance at Tate Modern last year that um, entitled Almost Avant-Garde that is like a weak performance that you're not even there. So can you tell us more about that? Um,我说的这个弱表演,weak performance.嗯,其实不一定是我不在哪里,因为我不擅长表演,所以我所有的表演的作品都不在。It's um, uh, not just in this case, uh, in all of my performance pieces, I'm, I'm not there. <laughs> 同样就像我画画一样,我不擅长画画,所以我从来也不画画。Actually, in my paintings as well, I don't participate in painting, so I've, I've never actually painted. <笑>同样,刚才Vanas说到我的几个表演的作品,其实这些行为的作品,我都称之为叫做弱的表演,弱表演。大概这一系列的这些作品,从开始, 嗯，开始做到现在大概有六七年的时间。The uh, performances that Venus was just talking about, which I call weak performances, um, uh, from when I first started, they've been going for about six or seven years. 
，就是说对于表演的思考呢，呃，还是在零七啊零八年零九年的时二零零八年零九年的时候，呃，我一直在想一个问题，就是作为一个艺术家，嗯、呃，在今天的这样的一个媒体社会里边，其实，呃，包括每一个个人，他时刻。不停的在不同的平台上，每天是有自己的表演的。Um, what I was particularly interested in from around 2008-2009 in relation to performance is how, in today's society, this type of mediatized society, how all of us, even at an individual level, are involved in some form of performance. 呃，唯一的区别就是说，有没有被注意观看和不注意观看，或有没有在聚光灯下、在舞台上和不在舞台上。So maybe the, um, the biggest difference is whether uh, there is an audience, whether you're on a stage, whether somebody is watching or not. 嗯，但这种表演它是永远不停止的。它虽然不在这个不同的这个语境里和情况里，它但它是永一直都在发生。到今天还是非常活跃的，在这个交往的过程中，人跟人的。嗯。But these types of performances actually are ongoing and continue all the time. Um, it, it doesn't matter whether there's this framework around it. Um, these performances between individuals. 呃，同样在这些表演的过程中，很多政治表达，包括是呃人跟人互相交往。如果回到艺术界的话，艺术界的互相相互之间的各种政治关系，也都在这个互动中给体现出来了。互动中，互动，啊，互动中，啊，对这个相互之间的艺术政治，都是在这种交往、交往中和表演中体现出来的。嗯、mm. um, ，So it doesn't matter whether it's in the art world or within this relationship between people,、um, or there's this,、um, or in the art politics, it's still. I lost the last part. <laughs> I think it's like actually more like instead of the body or whatever, like a lot of like politics are shown like between all these like personas and also also the interaction between people like in 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 this. It's still group. present. And and is in um actually like last time when I saw like your works at the Shanghai Biennial last year, um about your socialist realist like um realism research is um. I remember it's like there's a sculpture, right? So you basically use different type of medium, like media, to actually represent, like, present or represent, like, your thoughts, like, or like, you know, we thinking about this, like, actually, I I think social realism is kind of like, um,、mm, it's kind of like,、uh, you know, like how it is a generator of like Chinese contemporary art to begin with, like, because it's like it's the political pop. Cynical pop is like so, like it's so pervasive in the eighties and nineties in China, with like as being actually being like you know like fighting against you know the main or monopolized、um, way of making art back in the Cultural Revolution period. So, so you actually like you know balance between different media when you are working on this. But、um, uh, Sharon, you you work on like you also like work on different types of. Medium, like when you are actually thinking about, you know, you know, kind of like the exclusive community and also policy politics, and Toloi, actually, you use different types of like media too, apart from the photography that we saw, also including、um, the shields that you made, like the it, it has a very long name that I forgot, but like a bunch of like, you know, like native like shields that you、um, yeah. made. Basically, also links to the、um, absence of bodies as like a bodily element because there's always like you know two or more people like behind and in front of the shield. And also,、um, Jenny,、uh, so you also like mix together like very very different types of like medium like media to actually think about like the themes or like you know like、mm -hmm. the. The politics that you want to represent.、Sure. So、um, I was、uh, very interested in, you know, the relationship that the、um, artists have to the landscape or their lands, 
and the uh, Tarnal is a reference to her, the skin of her grandfather. Uh, oh, it's a, an, an elder, elder. Um, who, who said, yeah, yes, the skin. Yes, it's like it? the skin. And yeah. the posing of that, um, mentioning the relationship between the virtual, the virtual terrain and actual landscape, that within the virtual terrain, these sorts of relationships, these very fundamental, essential relationships between people and their land, uh, what, where does that go? That, that starts to pose a very interesting question where um, in, in that virtual terrain, um, the, the reference to actual physical landscape, place, memory, time, uh, is completely turned on its head and we, we, de we deal with that <coughs> on a daily practical basis all the time but I think that there are aspects to that that are actually um, um, interesting for the times and, and obviously for the future those relationships as we sort of are seen as kind of people that are absorbed into a realm that is less physical um, in, in our concentration or focus. Does anyone have questions? Like, then we can maybe we can take two. I'm just bringing the microphone to you. Hi, uh, just a question for Lu Ding. I'm just wondering what, what your take is. It's a big question, but what your take is on the uh, cynical realist? Uh, group or, or I guess you know artists working within that realm in the 1980s and 90s in China and in particular in relation to um, I guess a generational difference between their take on a grander history of social realist Chinese art and what you're doing. Portion就也不就是那个那个啊那个不是批判性的批判性就是文学建筑啊文学建筑的看法嗯谢谢你对那个的看法还有你跟那一代的艺术家跟你这一代的艺术家的区别好谢谢你对谢谢你的问题呃
sort of concepts and approach of that time, I don't think that it would, uh, I think it would change. 如果我从我现在的角度来说，这个词可能叫消极现实主义，我可能会这样来说。消极现实主义。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。消极。Dissolved. So if I use, if I look at it from my position today, I would see it as a kind of dissolved or past realism. Uh, because at that time, in the 80s, the whole cultural world and economy was in a 中通过我对当时的研究，呃，没有人在提出质疑和反抗，在八九之后。Uh, one of the reasons for this is because after 1989, um, whether in uh, basically there was a feeling of loss, uh, and so there weren't um, uh, expressions of protest or resistance. 嗯、uh,。我能不能先回答你第一个问题？因为好像没时间。So I'll just deal with the first question because of time. Yeah, um, thank you so much like, for all the artists and every one of you like, being here with us like, for the discussion. I mean, I, yeah, I think the time is really tight, so we have, we have been kicked out of here now. But, artists, but I mean, here, yeah, right? so we can like, keep on like, the discussion maybe like, outside like, with a coffee or something. So like, thank you so much, like, everyone. Please join us. Thank you. Sharon, Shin, Janine, Deloitte, Venus, thank you very much. Um, and thank you for being here. But please, uh, let's give these guys a round of applause.